This week, bears, leaks, and Battlestar Galactica. One of these things may or may not be true, so stay tuned for this week's drone news. It looks like DJI's quietly canceled an accessory that was supposed to come out way back alongside the DJI Air 3S. By now, you've probably heard about the tracking puck. It was a beacon, promising improved tracking, smarter return to home points, and pinpoint return to home accuracy. It would have been integrated seamlessly into DJI's ecosystem, even allowing pilots to control the drone functions without even a normal standard controller. Weeks first popped up about this puck back in October, but since then, things have kind of gone silent until now. In a recent Drone Excel article by Jasper Ellens, it appears that DJI has either postponed or outright canceled its launch. DJI hasn't officially commented, but we're speculating it might debut later this year alongside maybe an Air 4 or whatever the next iteration of drone and the endless march of consumerism that is drone consumerism. Well, what do you think though? Are they saving for a bigger review on this puck? Let's, let's talk about it down below. A 43-year-old Californian faces charges after getting caught flying his drone in Banff National Park here in Canada. Yes, that's right, a national park, aka not a place that you can fly a drone without jumping through some massive hoops. The park warden spotted Humberto Sanchez on December 3rd chilling in the back of his Jeep and flying his drone at the Minnewanka Loop. The warden ordered Sanchez to land immediately, which he did, and then presented him with what I assume was either a court summons or a bit of a fine. Last week, Sanchez pleaded guilty and got away with just a $500 fine. We've seen much bigger dollar amounts in the past. His lawyer claimed that Sanchez was unaware of the rules and emphasized his remorse. I couldn't possibly be in trouble for being ignorant. Like, yeah, that's the great defense. Come on, really? Federal prosecutor Chris Williams reminded everyone how drones negatively impact wildlife. They are kind of annoying and visitor experiences. So like you go to a park to get away from it all, you want some peace and quiet. Come on, let's not have these things hovering around. And just a reminder, flying drones in Canadian, national and provincial parks isn't just frowned upon, fines can hit up to $25,000. And while commercial permits are possible in national parks, it's pretty much unheard of or pretty much impossible for a federal park to grant a recreational drone permit in Canada. Big news this week as leaks revealed intriguing details about DJI's upcoming Mavic 4 Pro. Like, come on, it's 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 out at this point. It's Jasper Ellen's recently shared a photo showing the drone folded up. Well, what's the real bombshell here? The fact that now it has a potential 240 watt charger that'll seriously slash charging times almost in half. This could be a massive benefit for pilots that need to be able to turn a drone around really quick and keep those batteries topped up. To put it in perspective, the Mavic 3 series had a 100 watt charger at best and it took nearly two hours to charge a battery to full. So imagine cutting that down to an hour per battery. Quadro News also teased a product page confirming that we'll get a high speed USB-C cable bundled in with this charger. Right, this is important because a lot of gas station cables will probably catch on fire before your battery finishes charging. And there's more, Jasper hinted at multiple drone shells popping up, so cases. Could DJI be considering a modular design making repairs quicker and easier after crashes? Maybe, or maybe these are just prototype cases that haven't been fully coded yet. Aerosmith Search and Rescue in Vancouver Island just got the green light for an all new, all weather drone with thermal and zoom capabilities. Hmm, I wonder what it is. Maybe it's a Matrice? Nick Rivers, president of Aerosmith Search and Rescue said drones will revolutionize nighttime searches previously limited by helicopter capabilities. Now, teams can quickly deploy drones even in rainy conditions because of its all weather capability significantly boosting their rescue potential. Currently, North Shore Search and Rescue is the only night certified helicopter search and rescue team in BC, so adding this drone capability is a major upgrade for Aerosmith. Ken Needham, the search manager, confirmed four crew members are already drone certified and up in the air. These drones are quickly becoming essential and they're helping rescue teams save valuable time and lives. Do you have any personal experiences with drones and search and rescue or any cool stories about those rescue operations? Let us know in the comments down below. And speaking of essential skills, if you're looking to add drones to your search and rescue equipment tool set, Coastal Drone, that's us, has trained nearly 20,000 Canadians and abroad on basic and advanced drone operations in complex environments. We offer online and in-person training for individuals, groups, and organizations looking to utilize drones in these life-saving and critical situations and tons of other scenarios. You can check out the links below for more information about our five-star online and in-person drone training. 
We're always telling you not to chase wildlife with drones, but what if that drone could actually save your life? In Montana, drones now help scare away bears from populated areas because no one really wants a grizzly at their doorstep. Wesley Sarmento, former bear specialist slash enthusiast slash bear guy, has spent years testing these non-lethal hazing methods. The drones broadcast human voices or loud noises, guiding bears away without physical confrontation. I mean, why not just blast Fediwap on the JBL and just fly it around? Using these drones is safer than shooing a bear on foot, but some worried bears might get used to the drones and maybe they'll start subscribing to our channel. Wildlife managers are tackling this by varying techniques, keeping them on their toes or paws and removing bear attractants like spilled food or carcasses aka dead animals. As human presence expands, bear habitats shrink, so tools like these are going to become more and more vital to keep us safe and to keep the wildlife safe as well. What do you think about drones and the use of wildlife management now and in the future? Let's talk about it down below. And also, if you're interested, we've got a podcast episode exploring drone wildlife encounters and surviving the deadly backcountry of Canada. Check that down. Check that out up here. In a feel-good story from Texas, drones again have proven their worthiness to exist in our society. Yes, you're, you're a good little drone. A 92-year-old man diagnosed with dementia went missing in Cibolo, Texas. Cibolo? Cibolo? Welcome to Cibolo. Despite extensive ground search, police couldn't easily locate him until they brought out the drone. Within just 25 minutes, officers were able to locate him near a local green belt area, quickly reuniting him with his family. So kudos to officers Russo, Hackney, Spillman, and Balderas for their quick action. Stories like this, of course, remind us that drones aren't just about that cinematic shot or harassing Karens. They can genuinely be used for saving lives and for good. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this week. Don't miss our video this Sunday where we'll be diving into what's better for you. GPS drones, you know, the ones that fly around flat and level, or FPV where you can do loops and dupes and flips and dives and crash it into a tree within 10 seconds of taking off. If you find our content inspiring, educational, or at least entertaining, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and of course that notification bell. We've got plenty more coming your way. Stay tuned for more weekly news, drone technical deep dives, and of course, tips and tricks to help you become a more confident and professional drone pilot. We'll see you again soon.